Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time I want to focus on the BTEC assignment unit 9 which is called Human Regulation and Reproduction. There are three learning games to this unit and learning game A looks at the interrelationship and nervous system control of the cardiovascular and the respiratory system. This video focuses on the nervous system organization and function and there's going to be a number of videos on the playlist on my channel that are relevant to this unit. Click the link that's just flashed up on your screen now to access them all. Before we get going, I just wanted to remind you of the pass, merit and distinction criteria for this learning aim. So for the P1, you need to be able to describe the organisation and the function of the nervous system in relation to the cardiovascular system and respiratory requirements. For M1, you need to explain how nerve impulses are initiated, transmitted and coordinated in the control of cardiovascular and respiratory systems. And for D1, you have to assess the role of the nervous system in coordinating the cardiovascular and respiratory systems. All the videos for the P's, M's and D's will be in separate topic areas so that they're not too long and you can summarise that information in a more effective way. So please look at that playlist that I've just recommended to you. So an essential feature of living organisms is their ability to detect and respond to environmental changes. And the organ system that helps them to do that is the nervous system. Without it, we would not be able to survive or do the things that we do on a daily basis, like feel pain or other sensations. We wouldn't be able to have a beating heart, have a regulated ventilation system, but also the ability to walk and talk and smile and frown or do whatever else your body or your mind pleases. The nervous system contains cells called neurons, which specialize in transmitting information by electrochemical impulses in the form of action potentials. The impulses can be transmitted over considerable distances very rapidly, giving a very precise response. I've already created a video for action potentials, and you can access it by clicking the link that's on the top of your screen now. For now, I just want to talk about the organization, as you'll need to know this for your assignments. So the nervous system is split into two different pathways. You've got the central nervous system and you've got the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. We know that the brain is responsible for receiving and processing sensory information. It initiates response, it stores memories, it generates thoughts and emotions. The spinal cord has the role of conducting signals to and from the brain, and it controls any sort of reflex activities. The peripheral nervous system is governed by the actions of the motor and the sensory neurons, which we'll talk about in a second. The motor neurons are there for movement, so they're really there to transport messages from the central nervous system over to the muscles and the glands, which are therefore known as the effectors, and I'll talk about that in a second. The sensory neurons function is to send signals to the CNS to then initiate that response. So the sensory neurons are essentially associated with our five senses that you've learned about for years and years in your education. The PNS is further split up into the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Now, the somatic nervous system is there for controlling voluntary movement. So, for example, if you're looking at your desk now and you want to pick up a water bottle, that's a voluntary movement. You're telling your brain that you want to pick that up and then you pick it up. Your muscles contract and and so on to allow you to pick up that water bottle. The autonomic nervous system controls all sorts of involuntary movements. So things like our heart beating or our ventilatory regulation. Now the autonomic nervous system is split into two further divisions. It's split into the sympathetic pathway and the parasympathetic pathway. Now the sympathetic pathway is responsible for our fight or flight responses, which you've probably heard about before. Our fight or flight responses are really designed to ensure that we are kept safe from any threat or danger. It could be predatory or it could be from injury. Our parasympathetic action, for example, is known as the rest and digest. So this is, whilst you're watching this video, that's the kind of pathway that your nervous system is initiating responses in because you are simply just watching the video. You are not in the fight or flight mode.
The next part of this video is explaining the coordination by the nervous system. So let's take this example of seeing an external stimulus. I like to use the example of seeing a big scary dog in the park. This would be detected by the receptors and would start to initiate that fight or flight response I mentioned a second ago. My receptors like my eyes, ears, nose, mouth and stretch and pressure receptors that are all over my body will detect any sort of external stimuli. In this case, it would be my eyes seeing the big scary dog. You can also have internal stimuli as well. So for example, this could be a high concentration of CO2 in your blood, perhaps following exercise or something like that. This is also detected by receptors and our sensory neurons can then send messages over to our brain and our brain can then process the impulses and coordinate a response via the motor neurons. And that basically just means that impulses are sent or messages are sent down our motor neurons, which will bring about an appropriate response or an appropriate action. For your assignment, you have to include the structure of the motor and sensory neurons. So here are some images showing you what they look like and the function of each part. If we look at the sensory neuron first, we have the cell body off to one side and a dendrone and an axon. At either end, we have dendrites. This is a myelinated sensory neuron, which means that the speed of the impulse would be much quicker in this neuron. This is something that's covered in another video, which I've added to the description to this video. So please scroll down and you'll see which video that is. Essentially, you're looking at how action potentials are generated and how in myelinated neurons, they are much, much quicker. The motor neuron is slightly different in that the cell body is at one end and at the opposite end, you have the dendrites basically at the end of the axon. The nerve impulses will travel from left to right in this diagram of the motor neuron and similarly it will travel from left to right also in the sensory neuron. So let's just take a journey through the message of transmission. Basically what we're saying is that a stimulus will cause the electrical impulse or the action potential to be produced by a sense organ. So that could be in the skin, the ears, the eyes, the tongue or the nose. The nodes of Romvia, which are these little constrictions in the axon of the myelin sheath, will boost the passage of those nerve impulses along the axon, basically speeding up the conduction. The axon is there to carry nerve impulses away from the cell body and the dendrons will convey the electrical impulses towards the cell body. And then you've got this myelin sheath. These layers of myelin will wrap around the axon and the dendron to protect it. It's an insulating layer. Now, a motor neuron is normally connected to an effector, and when an electrical impulse is received, the effector, it could be a muscle or a gland, is stimulated into action. So, I hope that helps you understand the organisation and the function of the nervous system and the associated neurons. Please check out the playlist for Unit 9 by clicking the link above, and if you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.